Welcome to Blix, we are Ariana and Beatrice, Beatrice. And together we are Blix and today we're hosting our fifth sex positive education interview on our website experienceblix.com. We're hosting world's best facilitators and teachers putting, who have put their love and effort into creating amazing online courses for you. So and today we welcome Shashi Saluna. Very honored to have you here, Shashi. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Shashi is a master in the field of Tantra. She has done everything, workshops, retreats, festivals, books, a movie. She created <laughs> and lived in tantric communities. And um, now her latest project is an online platform where she hosts and shares Tantra tantric teachings and tantra teachers called lifetantra.com. Mm, wonderful to have you here, Shashi. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, Shashi. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Uh, well, as Arian said, you are one of the most experienced teachers, uh, tantra teachers in the world. Uh, I cannot call you a legend, but you are on the path of becoming one. Not, not yet, because you are too young to be there, but definitely you will reach there. Um, and yeah, I mean, we are all very inspired by your work, by your presence, and how you share yourself with the world. Um, and we are very interested in knowing what are the highlights on your path that have lead you to become the woman that you are today, the Sassi Soluna, the goddess <laughs> that you are today. Gosh, there are so many. I mean, when you live in a world of uh, Tantra, it's very full of highlights because uh, it's, I, I often define Tantra as being the, the path to live more fully and whatever is in the way of us living fully is what we are wanting to heal and transform. And a lot of that, of course, is our shame and our self-judgment, self-hatred, all those things. But that means that when you're living a tantric life, you're living life, you're really living it fully. And uh, that's why we came up with the name Live Tantra. I see, actually, I've got that written up instead of Shashi Saluna. But that's why we picked that name because it's so much about um, living. And before I, I got into Tantra, I was um, more sort of just spiritual. I had followed a Buddhist path. Um, I was celibate, uh, but I was very kind of stiff and serious uh, and disconnected from my own humanity and everyone else's. A little holier than thou and judgmental, I would say. And uh, I arrived at the Osho Ashram in India in 1999. And I felt better than everybody. I was like, I'm so spiritual. And I, and I remember thinking, who are these women? They think they're spiritual in their beautiful dresses and their makeup and their earrings. And, you know, I was, I was really serious um, and uh, uptight. <laughs> and, oh, wow. and, I know. And then we, we did some <laughs> dancing, some singing, and I just bawled my eyes out. And, and I was like, <gasps> and I realized I'd actually totally repressed my own um, hmm. my own feminine and my own humanity to become like this spiritual person to wear white to meditate all the time to feel better than everyone else so I I was fully uh, on a spiritual bypass <laughs> and um, and Tantra invited me to come back down again and to and to be human and hmm. um, so that's how it began for me and then at the and at the same time I had a relationship and we had met in something called satsang which is like sitting with an enlightened master or whatever like we met in this place of truth and awakening but through relationship we realized you know we could argue about who had done the washing up or whatever and it's like how can I sit on the yoga mat and feel like I am truth and you know I am that and then still be getting into stupid arguments you know I realized I have to integrate this otherwise I've, I'm stuck wearing white and sitting on a cushion that's the only place I can stay enlightened is like mm. sitting on a goddamn cushion mm. being celibate <laughs> and if I'm going to have a human experience, if I want relationships and sexuality and love, then I'm going to have to face my own humanity, my flaws, my traumas, my past, my shame, <laughs> my blockages, my body, all of that. I'm going to have to face that. I'm going to have to go into that. I can't just skip that. So, uh, 
that was how I got into into Tantra. Mm. <laughs> I'm so glad I did mm. because um, oh wow, you know it was a it was just one dimension to be all spiritual like that. You know, mm. I, at the time I thought it was it. I thought I had found the answer, um, but it like I said, it was so limiting. It was only the answer so long as I could live like a monk, mm. and um, mm. I I couldn't have the human experience from that limited place. Mm. <laughs> Yes, I resonate with this a lot. And yes, to being a human, to being imperfect in everything that we are, right? (laughs) In our perfections. (laughs) I so feel that Tantra, like one of the ways I like to look at it is like uniting the higher self and the small self together. That's one of Mm. the divine unions, you know, to to not just just try and become the higher self, but to say, okay, there is a higher self. There is a part of me that's made of pure consciousness that's connected to the higher consciousness. It's like my highest frequency but I don't need to just become that. I need, that's like my perfect inner parent actually that needs to pick up and hold my inner child, my wounded self, mm. you know, and, 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 and reparent myself and, and create an integrated self. So I feel like instead of having like enlightenment as the highest goal, it's more healthy in a way to have authenticity as our highest mm. goal, because, mm. you know, um, it's easy to have a kind of, disembodied enlightenment and authenticity mm. is the result of unifying those parts of ourself and it's much more rewarding i think mm. Mm. Definitely. Yes. Mm. The, truth. One, the <laughs> truth exactly mm. wonderful and what is the difference that you would like to see in the world through your love to tantra your embodiment and the work in sex positive education <laughs> you ask brilliantly big questions i love it <laughs> Uh, <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, I, I have a big passion for, um, for working with a sexual shadow and, um, started when one of my teachers said, um, you need to look at what, what you judge the most and go there. And I thought, Hmm, okay, I judge sexual violence. So let, let me go there and, and see what's behind that judgment. And that, decision just the universe then brought me a lot of interesting experiences i was working with uh women who had been raped um which was always a big interest of mine but by accident a man came i was in india and a man came into my session he like snuck his way in and said i need help and i'm i'm a rapist and i need help and at the beginning i was a little bit like oh no i'm only working with women and then i was like okay i don't feel entirely safe but let's just see what what is here and that really shifted my perspective on things. I realized that I was still in this um, idea of the victims and the persecuted and the, yeah, you know, the right and the wrong. And um, from that session, I started working with more men who had a history of being the perpetrators. And I discovered that there's equal amounts of trauma on both sides of this duality that it's not like there's an innocent one and a guilty one but that everyone has some kind of innocence and that everybody is subject to the same Mm -hmm. system that has a lack of education a lack of 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 consciousness around sexuality a lack of being able to hold space for what's vulnerable and i could i through several of my sessions with men uh I, i i got to really see the innocence of these men who who were lost in in a system that didn't give them uh, many options and um you know that and then i could also see that tantric tools and Taoist practices like testicle breathing just simple things where you're bringing consciousness down to the sex center and feeling the energy that's there was having these big men like break down in tears and rediscover their own inner feminine and you know just miracles happening so if there's a change i'd like to see in the world i actually feel that that tantra can um can also help deal with the sexual shadow we have in our world, mm. which we're hearing more and more about um, these days. We're hearing about pedophilia and, and a lot of violence, um, non-consensual violence. And, and, I, and I feel that our world continues to just simply judge. And when you judge a shadow, it just gets more shadowy. It just gets mm. more filled with shame. I don't think mm. it really transforms it. So if, if I could um, transform one thing, I would, I would love to see Tantra integrate that deeply and um, have more work with sex offenders and, mm. you know, people who, who've really been through big trauma on both sides mm. and, and to help those people find a way to heal 
to do work around forgiveness, to do work around the shadow, to, to bring the light into the darkest mm. places. I think that would make such a difference in the world. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I would love to, to, to see a liberated world or an integrated shadow of, of sexuality in the world too, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I, you know, like at the Tantra world so far has been mostly very lucky people um, who can afford the luxury to explore conscious sexuality, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it could also serve a much wider part of the, um, of the population, you know. Um, but currently, there isn't a kind of openness to that. Uh, but, you know, let's see. We continue to evolve as a field. Exactly. Beautiful mission. <laughs> slowly, slowly, one step at a time. Yeah. So change the world. Exactly. Very good. So we are honored to have not only one, but two of your courses in our website. The first one is called a Tantric Couple Webinar Bundle. And the second one is called From Trauma to Tantra, talking about trauma. So let's start uh, to look further into the first course, uh, the Tantric Couple Webinar Bundle which is a collaboration, a co-creation with another uh, amazing tantric couples or couples that work on the, on, or live conscious sexuality and tantra and intimacy that embody the path. So I would like to know under your perspective, what makes a couple to be tantric? What needs to happen on this container of the relationship in terms of agreements or practices? that are necessary to be a tantric couple? Well, you know, I, in a way, it's a little bit like I shared earlier that, um, you know, it's about bringing consciousness and awareness to our, everything actually from sexuality onwards. I, I feel our sexuality is, is our, a reflection of our unconscious mind. Um, before I studied Tantra, I studied um, psychology in Oxford. And I, and I noticed as I started work with sexuality, whatever we haven't um, processed is going to come out through our sexuality, making sexuality incredibly useful. Uh, but then we're not really given the tools to explore that. And it can feel very unsafe for people because of its kind of tapping into the unconscious because it can tap into our shadow and people are afraid of that. But actually that's, uh, that's the most interesting place to, to go for our expansion and our growth. Um, so uh, a tantric couple, I would say, uh, is very much about choosing to go on a journey together. It's um, and a couple. I'm define. I like. I define that as any two people who want to do a journey together, whether that's a journey of 50 years or whether that's a journey of like three days. That doesn't matter. The point is, you are deciding together. Let's 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 mm. use our connection. Let's use mm. use our love and our attraction to each other. To, to grow into our highest potential together. Like, how can we do this journey mm -hmm. together? Um, and so, yeah, so working as a tantric couple means creating a space together, a container that makes it safe for you both to, to explore whatever is gonna be there. Um, and that's different from conventional relating where there's a lot more blame and complaining and, and kind of people are not taught to take responsibility for what comes up. And that means if another person's shadow starts to be exposed, to, we tend to go into judgment or blame rather than making space for it to explore that together. And, then, and the same thing with triggers, if we get triggered by, by our partner, we tend to go into blame and make them wrong, wrong for it rather than seeing here's something interesting going on. How do we get through this together? How do we, you know, those are the most powerful growth points, but a conventional, uh, conventionally, we're not taught how to really go in to mm. explore those things. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. And in your, in your course, the participants will learn many tools um, and rituals, for example, how to create a magical space, kundalini rituals, as you said, the tools to solve these triggers that are coming up, healing trauma that is present, pujas, meditation, transfiguration, and much more that is in the content of the course. Our question here is now, in your current relationship, which of these tools do you and your partner use most to create intimacy, safety, and trust? And how does these tools help you? 
Uh, yeah. So before I answer that, I just also want to say that this is not only me teaching, just, mm. just to make that clear to people who are listening. What I did for this webinar is, is literally a webinar. I, I pulled together a bunch of uh, Tantra teachers who are in couples. Um, and it came because we were in lockdown in Bali and there were actually 14 of us living in one spot and we were all Tantric couples. And so we were sharing meditations and practices together there in Bali. We actually mm. went into a retreat center and, and we were practicing and I wanted to share that with the world. So I just want to make sure that's clear that I'm not taking all the credit here. I put it together and it's produced by Live Tantra, my company, but it's uh, more than just me and my beloved. Mm. My beloved and I, we run a business called The Tantric Couple. We run couples retreats. Um, and in answer to your question, um, we use all of the tools. I mean, we're, we're really an active tantric couple for sure. Um, we, we, I mean, we just find that being in a, in a relationship uh, with intention is so exciting um, and so much more than, I think, I think my biggest thing about when I remember, I mean, it's 20 years since I've been in a non-tantric relationship. Um, but when I was in a non-tantric relationship, I was very passive. We both just thought we'd fallen in love. Now love will happen. We have sexual attraction that will continue completely passive. And I see that in so many couples that it's just like, mm. Oh, we fell in love. Well, we should feel in love every day. Where did that go? Well, we used to be attractive. Now we're not anymore. And nobody, no, nobody really has this teaching to feed a relationship, to make magic happen, to keep creating experiences. Um, so I use different tools in different ways. Something that my partner and I used uh, a lot at the beginning was our trigger tools, partly because I had my room broken into um, three months after we met and I was naked on the bed and my room was smashed up by, so by someone, by a man. And I had so much trauma in my body that then when I met with my lover, I would get triggered by him because he's a man mm. coming towards me. So because I had, and, but, but I know about trauma. So then I was like, okay, let, I, I need to, to, to heal this trauma and I want to do it with you rather than make you into another enemy, another perpetrator. So him and I used a lot of tools. The thing that was most useful is pushing hands. We share about that on this webinar. Uh, we share about the, all the tools that we used. And what was amazing was that the trauma healed, but also I built more trust with him than I had done with any other man. So it wasn't only about healing. It was about building trust to go through more experiences together. Um, which then spread out into the rest of our lives, including our sexuality. It was like when you trust someone, you just open up with them on every level. So we always start our couples retreats teaching people what to do when you get triggered. <laughs> because when you start before doing the Tantra, because when you're doing all these lovely Tantric massages and meditations, you're bound to get triggered. You're bound to get touched somewhere. And then you're like, <gasps> you know, and, and if you don't have awareness, you just make your partner the enemy and you make them wrong for it. And you're totally certain in the moment you're triggered that the other person is wrong. That's what happens in the nervous system. So we need, we need a knowledge and we need tools that override that automated thing that happens when we're triggered, where we just go into blame. Um, because otherwise we just get in cycles of conflict the whole time. Um, so I, I'd say that this is one of the most important things I find is to have um, an overall container as a couple so that you can explore really deeply into your sexuality, into love, into energy, into all these yummy things, knowing you're going to get triggered along the way and knowing that you can get through any trigger together. That, that mm. makes it, you know, like that makes mm. it an unstoppable journey. Yes, this lands very well, well in me. I, I'm this kind of person in my relationships. I I get very triggered around my core wound and being rejected. And I try to communicate what I need, but I haven't met anybody who wants to hold me in that. And then, in fact, they reject me because me making a lot of drama out of my trauma trigger. And yeah, this, this lands really nice in me that there is like relationships out there where there is uh, working together on the triggers. I have not um, experienced this myself so far. So I'm, I'm hoping that, yeah, calling in a tantric relationship. <laughs> yeah. and you know, I mean, I also now we're teaching quite uh, a lot of the women bring their, their men along to my, our retreats. And so it's not, it's not even necessary that the man has to be like a tantric master or anything, but just a willingness and a curiosity mm -hmm. is enough. 
Um, because actually I noticed when we explain to men, oh, when your woman is triggered, because often the female body gets more triggered because it's more vulnerable. So mm. we're more, and women have had more abuse and so on in our bodies. So we tend to get more sexually triggered, for example. Um, but of course, both genders can. But when, when, we're, when I explain to the partners, you know, it's not personal, it's not to do with you, but you can move through it and here's how. They're so relieved, <laughs> like, oh, great. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it gives mm -hmm. them a way to move through mm -hmm. those, those things. And there's no way to get deeper in intimacy with someone without getting through the minefield that we all have mm -hmm. created from our past experiences. There's just no way to get deeper. And so either we're going to keep moving relationships or, you know, we find people who want to do that journey with us. And, mm. and it's, that's just such a blessing to have mm. that journey. Mm. Teresa. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I am reflecting on my personal story, but I'm not going to go through it. Let's go to the last question. Last but not least is, um, is this a course only for hetero couples? or uh, non-binary con constellations as well can benefit. Oh yeah, yeah everyone's welcome. We, we uh, I, I'm not sure, if I did a live class about, about that. I think what's important with, uh, with Tantra and Tao is that they both work with um, dualism and, and the non-dual together. So the word non-binary doesn't really work for the, for these systems because mm -hmm. they acknowledge that there is a binary existence and a non-binary existence. There is a dual and a non-dual. Mm -hmm. um, however, that doesn't mean that you have to be a man and a woman couple. Um, but in order to really uh, embrace these practices, you, we do need to embrace that there is such a thing as a duality going on, that there is light and dark, masculine and feminine, which may not be limited by gender whatsoever. Like as a woman, I used to be at a boys boarding school. I studied maths, economics and physics, and I was in the army. So I have fully run, this was more than 20 years ago, but I have fully run masculine energy through this body in this lifetime because I was raised with the belief that that is, that is what success looks like. And that mm. is how I get approval from the system. So before I got into Tantra, I fully ran masculine energy through my body. I was a Lance Corporal and, you know, I had my big weapon. I, I it's possible. And, um, of course, then for this sense of completion, I would seek uh, partners who are more yin um, because we do naturally unconsciously often seek a partner that will not necessarily complete us like, oh, no, we're together and we're one, but that will teach us, that will bring us energies that we haven't yet integrated into ourselves. Um, so it doesn't matter whether you're in a, in a male body, female body, whether you, you rather not even have a definition you can still run masculine and feminine energy, we, yin and yang. To feel sovereign and whole and complete, we actually need both. And, you know, to do anything successfully in our life, we need both. If you want to run a business, you've got to have the feminine artistic part and the masculine accounting and organizing part. Um, you know, to play the piano, you have to have the masculine discipline that learns the scales and the feminine creativity that puts in the passion. Mm. Anything we create in this life needs us to have a masculine and a feminine. And the beauty of relating is that we're attracted to people that will actually, if we're open hearted towards their energy, then it will awaken that energy within us. We can, we can awaken our own sovereignty, our own wholeness more and more through every sexual encounter we have or through being in one relationship, whichever we're choosing. So there, there's a, there's a tremendous growth there. If we're in denial of the fact that there, that we are, have differences, then it, they're probably not the right path for you. Like if you want everyone to be equal, then Tantra and Tao, she don't fit very well. But if you are two women in a relationship and you feel that you are exchanging energy and that sometimes you like to be on top, sometimes you like to be beneath, sometimes you like having all the power, sometimes you like surrendering. If you can feel that there is a dance of polarity within you and in your relating, then, then they're fantastic paths. If you want everything to be equal and non-binary and non-dual from the beginning, then there's a path called non-duality that, uh, that just goes there. But like I said, I don't think that really helps us with our humanity so much. Mm. You know, our humanity, it's murky and many people want to avoid it right now and pretend that it doesn't exist. But, 
you know, it does exist. We do have power dynamics, whether we like that or not. And we're going to have a more easeful journey in this human experience if we acknowledge that that is there and it's not right nor wrong. It just is. And then learn how we dance through that. And at the same time, there is a level at which we are all one and no power exists. Mm. So that's, that's what Tantra and Tao are really bringing us. Mm -hmm. Well, so thank you very much for selling all this and for all these couples interested on, you know, just walking this path together, this path of the play of polarities. Uh, was welcome to check out uh, Sashi's course, which is uh, really good and has like a lot of, lot of knowledge. Back it has there. over 17 hours of wow. um, <laughs> content. It's really, it's really rich. Pretty. Yeah, and I'm, I'm super thrilled that we're representing some of the greatest teachers in the field there. So, yeah, yeah. If, if any we couple... We have recognized some of the couple. More, it's a really good one. Hmm. Very good. So now let's move on for our last um, 10 minutes to look a little bit into your other course, From Trauma to Tantra. Um, so you talk, you have been already talking into that triggers can come up and trauma can can come up and this course is um, targeted around people who are aware that they are having trauma and do you recommend um, for those people to go on this journey by themselves to work on their trauma with the course that you're providing or should it be in um, guidance together with their partner with their beloved and when is it needed to reach out to a therapist instead of taking this course I would say yes, yes, and yes. Okay. Um, I, <laughs> at the beginning of the course, I do say have a therapist on call because mm. this is an online course. Mm. Um, so I recommend that people find someone who they could turn to should, uh, should there be more coming up than they feel they can handle. It's super important to have somebody who's not just a friend, somebody who's a therapist who you can call and book a session with. And even if you never book that session, just knowing that they're there is going to hold space for you. It's going to be like, oh, someone's there mm -hmm. if I need them. So I say that at the very beginning. And initially when I made this course, um, some years ago now, um, it, it was really focused on the individual because I would run a women's teacher training and I noticed, wow, you know, when I started learning Tantra, there was no trauma acknowledged at all it was just all about expansion and um but as i started to work i realized well we, we're kind of ignoring something really big here um and so i i i started to talk about trauma-informed tantra um and drawing from work i'd done before in psychology and and also keeping up to date with new developments because trauma is a field that is great wonderfully growing more and more putting that together i created this course for those people who maybe enter tantra but find that trauma is coming up or who want to enter tantra and feel like still there's trauma mm. now this this is often people on their own because sometimes trauma stops us from being able to be in a relationship or if we attract people to relate with who are like our previous uh, perpetrators so we attract abusive relationships because that was already in our field so it's it's designed for individuals however having said all that i learned along the way that many people I, as i work with couples more and more i realize many couples are also facing how to deal with trauma and, th and they don't have a therapist they're just there and they get and triggers are coming up and and uh, especially a lot of men are trying to hold space for their women through past sexual trauma and it's wonderful that they want to do that but they need more tools to know how to do that mm. so i added later in um more, a section about how to work as a couple through this um so there's like one section for couples so basically it can be done either whether you're on your own or as a couple and no matter which you're in i always recommend to seek out a therapist um and just have them on call and the only the, 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 to understand when we need a therapist which is if um i talk at the beginning a lot about how to resource yourself which is how to hold space for yourself your safe place, uh, how to breathe, how to make yourself feel safe again. Because the only time we need help, we need to be held, is when the emotion feels overwhelming. When mm -hmm. whatever's coming up literally feels overwhelming and it feels overwhelming when we can't hold it for ourselves. And that's fine not to be able to hold it. Um, in those situations, we then need someone else to step in who can hold space for us while we're feeling it. And then uh, we're, that helps uh, to integrate. That's basically what the process of healing is. 
So I explain all of that so people know when they should ask for help. Um, and then many people find they don't actually need to, but it's good to know that they're relieved on knowing that they have someone there should they need them. Mm. Yeah, very good. Trauma, trauma is, is big. I recently went through my personal uh, process through trauma, not the first one, but the last one <laughs> happened very recently. Um, and yeah, I went through this process of recognizing how many of my fight or flight relationships are attached to traumas from childhood, which, uh, which I, I, am, I am still healing and, and watching slowly, slowly. <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's important to, to, um, to say that we don't need to be completely healed to have a healthy, to have a relationship. Like sometimes it can feel like, oh, I've got to heal myself first, right? Mm. And then there's this feeling of like, oh, I'm never going to be fixed and whatever. But mm. I think it, it's like, why wait? It's beautiful to go into a relationship. That's why I call it a journey. If there's, because we all have traumas. You had a perfect childhood. I don't know. Like we live in a very uh, messed up world, especially around sexuality. So if you can find someone who's, who's like, come on, let's do this healing together. Then, then we don't have to wait, but we do need to have tools. And we do need to have some understanding of how trauma shows up and how to move through it. And, mm. and then, you know, we can do it in relationship if, if that's what we want. I don't think. It, it can be a choice but you're absolutely right like these things from childhood you know mm. like in a way once you start tantra that's when you realize how much is there you know it's easy to uh, be quite numb to it all you know in the mainstream mm. world where people just using a lot of alcohol or drugs before they have intimacy or turning out the lights or you can kind of numb yourself to trauma and actually when you start to do sexual healing and conscious sexuality often it's like a shock to discover that there is actually trauma in there. Um, but, you know, that's how it is to do this path, is to start mm -hmm. unpacking things and then know how to heal them when they arise. Mm -hmm. And uh, can, you, can you share, um, because you know, too many traumas, we hold uh, different stories, different childhood that present in all kind of different life situations. Sexuality, of course, is bigger. Uh, so can, can you share like how actually trauma manifests? What kind of manifestation, what kind of reactions someone who holds trauma in the body can have? Yeah, there are different things to look for. Um, one is freezing, um, and many women have this, the freeze response, which is like uh, the deer in the headlights. And how that shows up sexually is that a woman will freeze when she's overwhelmed. Now, the difficult thing about that is that many men think, oh, she's surrendering. <laughs> and so I think it's important to teach men um, and women, but especially men, how to see the difference between a, a surrendered woman who's still fully present and a kind of frozen one who's mm -hmm. just like le le letting something be done to her. Um, and so that's a super important one to, to learn about in ourselves and in our partners so that we can, can see that that's not really surrender at all. Um, and, and another is, um, is, is the fight response, which can be healthier. That's getting really triggered and pushing someone off and saying, get away from me now. Um, and that's happening more and more. You can see it on Facebook and things that people who are traumatized are, get, are, are finding their voice, which is great. But that voice tends to be, you're all evil and wrong and you're the perpetrator, even when it's uh, not. It's just an innocent lover who, who is uh, there to open you up. Um, so there we need to learn how do we move that fight through and, re and reestablish healthy boundaries. And that comes from speaking boundaries, but also a lot physically from like pushing our hands and our legs and being able to say no and push someone away. That brings back a kind of feeling of safety and, and ability to mm. express our boundaries. And another huge thing is dissociation. And again, in the Tantra world, I notice that some people mistake that for a spiritual experience. To dissociate is to leave your body because it's too traumatic or painful to stay in it. So the eyes will roll and you kind of like leave. And it's easy to mistake that of like, oh, my partner's gone to heaven and having a spiritual experience. But actually, they may just be disembodied. So learning about embodiment, how to stay present in the body is super important. And feeling the absence of your partner and being able to call them back and get back in the body rather than continuing um, with the sexual experience um, 
it, you're going to have a more rewarding time with fully conscious embodied sexual experiences. Mm. Um, so, and that's also important to learn for ourselves. I know many women who come on my women's training are like, Oh, I've been dissociating. I thought I was having a spiritual experience, but I wasn't really there. And mm. then seeing that there's a deeper and much more rewarding experience, a much more pleasurable experience from learning how to come into the body and stay in the body. Um, then something incredible can happen and, and having expansion and these kind of spiritual experiences, experiences without needing to leave the body um that's that's what we're really aiming for so that we can stay mm -hmm. present also mm -hmm. and i don't know it's a bit woo woo for you but like entities uh, and other energies can enter your body when you're not in it so it's also important to learn how to stay here in our bodies so that we can uh mm -hmm. we can be the ones that inhabit our bodies <laughs> not some mm -hmm. other energy Thank you. i haven't seen all this kind of the association with everything uh, with breath work you know, some, some people, not, not only an orgasm, well, it's the same energy, of course, uh, life force is life force, but not with the particular sexual practice, but if you go through a breadwork session as well, uh, many people kind of disassociate, they go into, they are not in their bodies, you can really feel it, or with the plant medicine as well, like ayahuasca yeah. sessions where people just lay down and they are not there, they are just like in the higher realms. And, yeah, it's true. And I've seen in ecstatic dance, you know, people who are there and they're completely absent from their body and they don't realize that's actually kind of dangerous to do energetically. Um, and so I, I think that embodiment practices are uh, super important, but there's so much more pleasure actually from being in this body as well. Mm. Um, so you know, it's, uh, it's rewarding in and of itself. And people are innocent. It's not like people are wrong for dissociating or freezing or whatever. We need more education and understanding around it so that we can learn how to, how to have deeply embodied experiences. Mm. Yes, yes, wonderful. Thank you for putting all these embodiment practices and also approaches from the mind, what you can do to get the right mindset um, together in this online course from trauma to tantra i really appreciate that you share this with with the world and that we can host this on our website thank you mm. well thank you for bringing together all these great resources and sharing it with people mm. Mm. thank you very much for being part of it we have the very last two questions that we make to everybody that comes up uh, in mm. the interviews and the first one is when you hear blix which is our brand what comes to your mind? Bliss. Mm. <laughs> and I, you know, the bliss comes up because obviously it's a similar word. Um, but bliss is a very beautiful word for me. I feel that um, bliss is one of the most beautiful states that we can enter in Tantra. And it's, uh, for me, the experience of bliss is when being in this body is the most is, everything in it is delicious everything in it is you know like hyper sensitized i just did a tantric massage course this weekend for couples mm. and and the, the weather was gorgeous and the gardens were gorgeous and i just remember after each massage walking outside and every flower smelled amazing all the food tasted mm. delicious and just like wow this is the best experience of being mm. a human this mm. is bliss. Mm. so that's what i uh, that's what i see when i see this name mm. yeah um yes but bliss bliss is bliss is heaven it's the best drug on earth i would say <laughs> natural drug absolutely <laughs> so the other question sorry go ahead no no i was going to make a question because i thought you forgot about it <laughs> <laughs> good um so what is the single thing that allows you to feel more bliss in your body Ah, there's a single thing. Well, I think any, any practice that brings anchors my consciousness into my physical body. Mm. And, and there are so many different meditations, touch, uh, rituals, like I think all of the tantric tools, mm. whether we're namastaying each other before sex, whether we're touching each other in a very conscious way, whatever we're doing, I, I feel that the tools that are really aiming to bring consciousness into physical form deeply, take us into bliss. And luckily, there are lots of different tools. So it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful journey. It's not just one way. Yes, many ways lead to, lead to bliss. 
Yeah. But it is that, you know, like often Tantra is defined as a meaning of consciousness, a Shiva and Shakti. Um, and, and Shakti being this whole feeling, sensing, physical experience and Shiva being the consciousness. And when, when we're fully conscious in this human experience, um, even the pain will transform into pleasure. Even our trauma will transform into opening up. And so then we're in bliss in this human experience. It's not just about like good things. It's about life itself can be blissful when we can meet it fully, when we have the capacity mm. to meet it fully. That, that's the secret of bliss. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> a great a great point to exactly <laughs> yes mm. thank you Shashi, for for sharing yourself here with us mm. yeah. thank you for your wonderful questions mm.